So tonight, we're going to talk about the next step in this progression of things. I want to talk to you tonight about speaking to your brain. But before we get into this, let's pray because our brains need it. So bow your heads with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we receive your wisdom tonight and your word. I, I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that every person in here would have divine revelation, divine attention span to be able to receive this word so that they can get a hold on their thoughts and they can make the difference in their own mind and then in their heart and then in their life. God, we thank you that you're doing it and we receive it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Turn around, look at someone and say, listen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am Mr. Kimball. I am your new kindergarten teacher. I want you to be quiet while I'm reading this. Do it. <laughs> okay. I had to get that out of my system. I know I don't quite look like Arnold. But anyway, all right, Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians 5, Ephesians chapter 5. Paul's writing here in Ephesians, and he gives us a real interesting parallel. How many of you want to get married someday? Ephesians chapter 5, starting in verse 25, it says this. Shh. Listen. It says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Then look down at verse 32. He says, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. This whole passage is interesting. He's talking about husbands and wives and their relationship. But right in the middle of it, you notice that he starts talking about not husbands and wives, but Christ and the church. Jesus has a relationship with us. Who's the bridegroom? Who? Jesus is the bridegroom, so who's the bride? We are, the church. So there's a relationship there, and it's a good, solid relationship. He makes the parallel between a husband and wife's relationship, the relationship between him and us. He says this, Jesus loved the church, gave himself for it. Why? So he might sanctify the church and cleanse it, with the washing of water by the word, I like this next verse 27, uh, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. How many of you hate zits? You just absolutely abhor them. You don't like them at all. All right. That's not what he's talking about. Now, I believe the power of God's word in your life can rid you of pimples. I do believe that. Why? Because it's healing. Infection is not God's will for your skin. Is it, Tani? <laughs> no, it's not. Tani works with hair and with nails. In fact, if, girls, if you need your nails done, go see Tani. She does an awesome job. She does... <laughs> you guys. The wrinkles, the spots, the blemishes that he's talking about... I believe primarily have to do with your mind and your heart. Because he says the washing of water by the, what? Washing of water by the word. Well, you don't take God's word and rub it on your skin like that. You know, it's like I got a zit. Oh, got it. That's better. Washing of water by the word. That's, that isn't what it's talking about. You can stand on the Word and God will heal you from infections, praise God. But the washing of water by the Word is talking about your mind and your heart. Well, how do you get the Word flowing so that it's working through your mind and your heart? You read it. You meditate. You speak it. All three. All three. You read it, you meditate on it, and you speak it. 
That's how you get the washing of the water by the word. It cleans you up mentally and spiritually. You know, when I get tired and, and there's a whole bunch of stuff going on, and I mean the pressure. How many of you felt pressure this last week in school? You know, all the assignments, all the stuff. You know what I do when I feel like that? I get out scripture tapes and I just listen to scripture tapes. And after I listen to them, I feel better. When I'm wiped out, I'm really tired. I've been preaching and doing all kinds of stuff, running around counseling people or whatever. And I'm really wiped out. I can lay down, close my eyes, turn on a scripture tape. And after just a little bit, I feel a whole lot better. You know why? It's washing me from all the pressure and all the garbage, all the thoughts, all the stuff that you go through. Now turn over to John chapter 15, because Jesus talked about this very same thing. John chapter 15, starting in verse 1. John 15, 1 says, Jesus is talking. It's red. Jesus talks in red. He says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. Every branch that bears fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. How many of you are hooked up to Jesus? I mean, you're hooked up. Okay, he says, he's the vine, and God the Father's the husbandman. And if what is the fruit? It's not like bananas coming out of your ears. It's talking about your life is producing results. You're a success. You're doing good stuff, and good things are happening around you. That's results. He said, if you're bearing fruit, the Father purges you. And what he's talking about is he cuts back the branches on a tree you get limbs that are kind of out of whack or you know like a dead limb he just cuts all the excess off so that you can concentrate on what's exactly going on and then he says in the midst of all this vine branch stuff he says now you are clean through the word that i have spoken to you how does god purge us how does he prune back all the junk that tries to grow into our lives how does he do it now you are clean through the Word which I have word the word which I have spoken unto you. How do you get clean? Through the word. Flip a page or two over. John seventeen. Look at verse fifteen. Jesus is talking here again. He says, I don't pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Then he says this, sanctify or cleanse them through your truth. Your word is truth. Jesus said, hey, don't take them out of the world, but keep them from the evil that's in the world. How do, they get, how do you keep from the evil that's in the world? You get cleansed by the word. That's what he said, sanctify them or cleanse them clean them, wash them, purify them by the truth. Then he says, your word is truth. How do you get washed of all that junk from the day? The word. You read it. You meditate on it. You hear it. You speak it. What are we talking about? Speaking the word. Psalms 119, verse 9. You can turn there if you want. I'm going to read this to you. Psalms 119. That's the longest chapter in the world. In the world. Longest chapter in the Bible. In the Word. Word. The longest chapter in the... Yeah, that's... So get your word up. Okay. Psalms 119, verse 9. It says, How shall a young man... How many of you are young men? You're not kids anymore. I, I don't know if anyone's told you yet, but none of you in here are children. You're all men and women. Maybe young men and women, but you're all men and women. All right? You got that? How, then, shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to your word how does a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to the word not according to tv or the movies 
You know, you say, are, Spencer, are you saying don't go to the movies? No, I'm not saying that. But what are the percentages in your life? I mean, how much more word do you get than movies? Or is it the other way around? How much word do you get compared to how much television you watch? You say, well, I watch Christian TV. Well, that's good sometimes. But you gotta, you got to be careful what you watch on Christian television, too, because they might get on there and say, yes, Christians can have demons. Yes, every Christian needs to have demons cast out of them because healing is not for today. Demons are for today. And yes, you can have a demon. If you'd like a demon, call the 800 number that's on your screen right now. We'd be glad to pray with you that you can get your own personal demon. Thank you. <gasps> you know, and it's just... You can't watch all Christian television. You know what I'm talking about? Hello? Okay. How shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed to the word. I looked up this word heed. It means to hedge about as with thorns, like a hedge of thorns, to guard, to protect, to attend to, to preserve, and to save. How do you protect your way? How do you protect the way that you're going in life? You surround it with the protection of God's word that is like thorns to the enemy. When the devil comes up against you, if you've surrounded your life with God's word, it'll protect you from getting attacked. Now, some of you have been attacked lately. You're going, God, why is this always happening to me? <laughs> and God says, because you got a hole in your hedge. I mean, the devil comes out as a big old hole. He's going to come in. There's no word there. There's no, if, there's no Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against me can prosper there. There's no John 10, 10. The thief came to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came to give you life and life more abundantly. You're not surrounded by the word. How do you get surrounded by the word? You read it. You think it. You meditate on it. You speak it. You believe it. You act on it. You walk in it. Okay. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We're giving your Bible a workout here tonight. Reach and stretch and one and two and read and believe and stand and read. No, don't stand. Okay, 2 Corinthians 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 3. How many of you have a brain? Who has a brain? How many of you have a mind? How many of you have a mind of your own? You ever hear that? That's an interesting, that's, you know, that's an interesting term because a mind of your own, that's like some people share brains or something. He has a mind of his own. Well, I hope so. <laughs> Better than sharing brains. What happened to him? Oh, he lent his brain to his friend and it's gone. Second Corinthians 10. Chapter 10, verse 3, says, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or fleshly, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, we have weapons. The weapons of our warfare, you know what they are? They're the Word. The Word. When the devil came against Jesus, what did Jesus do? Did he give him his opinion? No. Did he tell him just what he thought? No. He spoke the Word. The devil came against Jesus, and Jesus said, It is written, and quoted the Word to him, and the devil had to leave. He had to. He had no choice. Why? The devil cannot fight the Word. He can't do it. God's word is forever settled in heaven and it won't be changed and the devil can't stand up against it. That's the only way you fight against the devil is God's word. Now God's word does say that the name of Jesus has been highly exalted. It's the name above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So God's word has declared that the name of Jesus is powerful. So by his word we get instruction that we can use the name of Jesus. And boy, you better know how to use the name of Jesus. I mean, if you don't know the word, you better know the name, how to use the name of Jesus. Some guys in the book of Acts tried to use the name of Jesus. 
the sons of Sceva. They got a demon-possessed dude in there. And uh, they said, in the name of Jesus, who Paul preaches, come out of him. We don't know Jesus, but Paul does. Man, if you don't know him, don't go throwing his name around. you got to know how to use the name of Jesus. And you got to grow past that. you got to know how to use his word. See? The name of Jesus will help you and get you out of a mess, but you're going to have to grow. Okay? You learned how to walk, right? You know how to walk, but there's more, right? There's running and soccer and football. I mean, there's more than just walking. And it's the same way with the word. There's, there's the name of Jesus is a great place to start because you have to start somewhere. I remember when I was really young in the Lord, the name of Jesus got me out of some bad situations. You know, some serious stuff where the devil tried to attack me and I used the name of Jesus and he fled. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. There's strongholds in your life. Strongholds of doubt, strongholds of unbelief. Some of you are sitting here right now going, do we really believe this? Speak, meditate. What is all this, Jeff? Those are strongholds. Why? Those things are going up against the knowledge of God. And if you get a hold of the knowledge of God, you're going to be dangerous to the devil. And that's what he's scared silly of, because the minute you start believing this stuff and acting like it's true, his program is over. Why? You'll do wild stuff like stand in front of your school and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, drugs, alcohol, sexual perversion, get out of here, I command you, no weapon formed against this school can prosper. And you know what? It'll, it'll do it. It'll work. Why? Because you believe it, and you're saturated with his word. But if you don't believe that, you're, oh no, there's drugs. And there's, they're having sex and stuff. And it's terrible. It's everywhere. It's awful. If you want the cat, what do you do? Call the cat. You don't call the dog. If you stand in front of your school and go, it's terrible, things are awful, you know what you're going to get? Casting down imaginations. You ever have imaginations? You ever sit there in school and the teacher's talking? Wah, 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 And you're off somewhere else. I mean, you know, you're riding your motorcycle on a field. Or you're at the prom. Imagination. Okay? You've got an imagination. That's not a bad thing. It's a good thing to have an imagination, but see, if you use it correctly, it'll work for you instead of against you. If you use your imagination, God's way, fill your imagination with God's word, it'll fill you with the power of God. But casting down those bad imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, you've got to talk to your brain. How do you bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ? You talk to your brain. I was driving down the street one day and I was thinking about all the stuff I was going through. Thinking about all the problems, all the pressures, all the things that were going on. And I was really getting depressed. I mean, it's like, you ever do... You come home from school. You know, you get done talking with your parents. You get done watching some movie and it's... Luke... Come with me. And it's just this heaviness. I'm driving down the road, I'm thinking about all this junk, and I'm th it's just <laughs> heavy. And all of a sudden, I thought, this is not good. This is not good. Bringing every thought into the captivity of the obedience of Christ. You've got to make up your mind to do this kind of stuff, because it's the only way it'll work. See, right now, some of you are distracted. Your mind is going all over the place. You're not listening to the thing I'm saying. And you know what that is? You're getting robbed of the word. Why? God gave me a word for you tonight. And what's wild about this is you're going to stand in front of God and God's going to say, did you do what Spencer told you? You say, what did he tell me? And you're still going to be responsible for it. See, you've got a responsibility out there just like I've got a responsibility up here. I've got a responsibility to tell you, but you've got a responsibility to listen and get a hold of it. Why? Because if you don't, nothing's going to work in your life, and you're going to stand in front of your school picking your nose going, what am I doing now? Flick. I don't know. Something. 
Bringing every thought into the captivity of the obedience of Christ. How do you do that? You've got to talk to your brain. I'm driving down the road. This thing is getting heavier and heavier. All of a sudden, I stopped. I said, what am I doing? This is ridiculous. I don't need to be depressed. Depression is not from God. I don't need to feel this way. So I started talking to my brain. I said, brain, pay attention. The joy of the Lord is your strength. It's interesting you should do that because that's exactly what I started doing. I started speaking to my brain, and after about a couple, at first it was hard. I'm going, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Brain, heart, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. I'll get to you in just a second. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And it, it feels so stupid when you do it because you're, you know, I'm driving along. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You know, it's like you're really into it, right? No. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The and then you kind of look at yourself and you go, this is stupid. So you go, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord <laughs> is your strength. All of a sudden, the depression was gone. I wasn't going, <gasps> I was laughing. I was having a great time. Hey, you, up in the stands. Monday. Track. You're running laps, loops. Okay, okay. She was running loops and she doesn't like to run, so she... <laughs> she was laughing very hard. She wasn't dying laughing. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're okay now. Lazarus, come forth. I'll run and not be weary. I'll walk and not faint. You talked to your brain. How awesome. She talked to her brain, and guess what? It worked. It worked. She talked to her brain, and it worked. It works when you talk to your brain, especially if your brain listens. Who can tell me what Joshua 1.8 says? Well, let's go there. Joshua. If you listen to the song Meditate on the tape that we did, first verse. You ready? This, Book of the Lost. Anyway, there's a reason for it. Okay, Joshua 1. Are you there? Joshua chapter 1. Listen. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun. Now this is amazing to me that Joshua had no mother. He was the son of Nun. Either that or she was Catholic, and I don't know how that happened either. So it was a miracle either way spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I will give to them, even the children of Israel. This is cool. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, I have given it to you, as I said to Moses, from this wilderness and the Lebanon and to the great river Euphrates and the land of the Hittites, to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast, there shall not any man stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide for an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give to them. Only you be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Turn not from it from the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you will meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Strong words. Power words. What if Joshua had stood there and said, I can't. You ever said that? 
someone says, hey, do this. And you go, I can't. You ever done that? And your dad says, don't ever say that again. <laughs> your mom says, don't ever say that again. Whang. There's an echo in here. It's incredible. He says like three different times. He says like three different times, be strong and very courageous. Be strong and very courageous. Be strong and very courageous. Meditate on this day and night and you'll be prosperous and have good success. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. You know this word meditate, you know what it means? To mutter. To mutter. You ever mutter, mumble, talk under your breath? People do it at school all the time. In fact, tomorrow, this will be so cool. Here's, here's a little check, all right? When you go to school, see how many people you can find that mutter. Watch people walking down the hall, see how many of them are muttering. There's a morning of the summer, a teacher, stupid idiot, right? stupid homework all the time. We can't mess. And count them, just count them, all right? This will be fun. You'll just be walking around school going, one, two, 84, 85, 97, 1,002. They're muttering. But what are they muttering? You th how, mu how much of it you think is positive and how much you think is negative? Mostly negative. The flesh, see the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh. They're spiritual weapons and they're powerful. You know what our weapons are? The Word. How do you get cleansed? By the Word. How do you use it? You mutter it. You mutter it. Be strong and very courageous. 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 Be strong. Be strong. Be strong. Be strong. Be strong and very courageous. Be strong and very courageous. What are you doing? You're muttering it. You're saying it over and over and over and over and over. And pretty soon you'll start to believe it. That's what meditating means. You just hash it over and over. You know what meditating on the Word does for your mind? The same thing lifting weights does for your body. Same thing. Your mind and your heart will get so strong, full of God's Word, but you've got to mutter it. When you catch yourself, see, some of us still do this muttering stuff, but it's not positive and it's not spiritual and it's not God. When you catch yourself muttering something negative, Stop yourself and don't get under all con kind of condemnation. Oh, I can't believe I blew it again. Oh, I just give up. I'm stupid. I'm an idiot. Don't do that. Instead, check yourself. You say, God, I'm sorry. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be like that. Get a hold of a word, a scripture, and start speaking it. Talking it. Over and over and over. Just, just like this. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I shall run and not be weary. I shall walk and not faint. No weapon formed against me can prosper. Be strong and very courageous. Over and over and over and over and over. If this word will never pass away and you fill your life with this word, what's going to happen to your life? It'll never pass away. Why? It's saturated with this stuff. It's alive. It's full of power. How does it become alive? By sitting on the shelf? No, by you speaking it. You've got to talk to your brain. Some stuff you got to just talk yourself into. You're not just going to get it by, oh, that was a nice sermon. Thank you, Spencer. That was very nice. Thank you, thank you. No. See, it only begins in here. This isn't the end of it. It's like, oh, that was nice. I feel much better now. No, this is the stuff that you take and you go out there with it. And you walk into the school, I'm strong and courageous, I'm strong and courageous, I'm strong and courageous. Someone says, hey Fred, how you doing? Hey, I'm strong and courageous. Oh, what did I do? You spoke the word. Psalms chapter 1 says, blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. And so on. So people would come up to, you know, you walk around and you get these auto answers. Not automobile, but automatic you go, hi, how you doing? Fine, fine, how you doing? Fine, fine, hi, hi, fine, fine, hi, how you doing? Fine. I am so tired of that. You know, every once in a while i got to throw something interesting in there. So people go, hey, how you doing? I go, blessed, happy, prosperous, fortunate, enviable. They go, oh, thank you. Why? It's in there. It's in there. How did it get in there? 
blessed, happy, prosperous, fortunate, to be envy. I said it over and over and over and over. And verse 3 of Psalms chapter 1 says, His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. When I was in Bible school, my roommate Franciscus Javier Gomez Rubio Ordiaz would wake himself up in the middle of the night preaching in his sleep. And God wants you! And he was just screaming along, and he woke himself up one night preaching, and I was over in my bed, sound asleep, going, Amen! Come on! Oh yeah! Uh Uh-huh! He told me about it the next day. I don't know if I should believe him or not. But anyways, in your sleep, day and night. See, this stuff, when you're asleep, yeah, your brain goes to sleep, but your spirit's still working. You ought to listen to tapes while you're asleep. It'd be awesome. Last chapter in verses here, Matthew chapter 9. We'll wrap it up with this story. Matthew 9 and verse 20. Matthew 9 verse 20 says this. And behold, a woman who was diseased with an issue of blood for 12 years came behind Jesus and touched the hem of his garment For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Your faith has made you whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Does anyone here have an amplified Bible? Do you have an amplified translation? Do you have one right there? Tell me what this says uh, in verse 21. It says in the Amplified Bible, for she kept saying to herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be made whole. For she kept saying to herself, for she kept saying to herself. Now, this is amazing. Do what? This is amazing. A woman who heard about Jesus. See, most of you came here to this youth group because you heard about it. Someone came up to you and said, hey, there's a youth group out there. They mean a hanger. It's really wild. He just let's go and meet an hanger. He said, uh, okay. And so you came. You heard about it. Well, this woman heard about Jesus and his healing power. She had done everything she could, but she couldn't stop bleeding. She cut herself and it wouldn't heal up. That'd be rough, man. You'd have to walk around real careful. You'd get a bruise and it wouldn't heal up. You'd be purple. I mean, like a grape. It'd be awful. She couldn't stop bleeding. Twelve years like that. She heard about Jesus. She heard about him opening blind eyes, deaf ears, raising people from the dead. It was awesome. She heard all these stories. And so she started thinking, you know what? He's my answer. He's my answer. And so she started saying within herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, if I could just touch his clothes, I'll be made whole. If I could just touch, if I could just touch him, if I could just get up close enough to touch his clothes, I know I'll be made whole. He heals the sick, he cleanses the lepers, he raises the dead. If I can just touch him, I know I'll be made whole. What was she doing? She was meditating on what she had heard. She was muttering it. She said it, she said it, she said it, she said it, she said it. She believed it. She acted on it. She did the word. She snuck up behind him, nabbed his garment, and started to take off. She wanted a drive through blessing. A drive through healing. I'd like one healing, please. <laughs> Would you like some fries with that? No, just a healing. Okay. Bing, bing. It's just, bam, I'm out of here. I'm, and she, immediately, she felt like she was healed. Jesus stops the whole crowd. Wait, 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 wait. What's, wait a second. Someone touched me. And Jesus was surrounded by a crowd. I mean, they were all bumping into each other. There were thousands of people there. And Jesus is like, they're going through this crowd. And Jesus stopped. Wait, someone touched me. And Peter goes, duh. Everyone's touching you. He says, no, power went out of me. Someone did the drive through thing. What's going on here? Hang on. Somebody, somebody got healed. Who is that? And the lady comes up. She says, it was me. He says, go your way. Your faith has made you all. See, Jesus doesn't want you to just come and get stuff and take off. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to spend time with you face to face. He's personal. He's very personal.
And when you get into the Word, the other morning it was interesting because I was praying, and I've, I've got scripture verses that I pray every day. I pray Psalms 91. I pray over my family. I pray over you guys. I pray over the church. And I pray in God's Word. And the Lord started ministering to me in the middle of it. He says, okay, I want you to shift into another gear. And I want you to be conscious of praying these things from your heart. Because after a while, you just get kind of brain dead, you know? You just, well, I dwell in the secret place of the Most High, and I abide in the shadow of the Almighty, and say, the Lord is my refuge, my fortress, and my God. And you just, if you do that, it's not coming from your heart, and there's no power in it. And for God's love, the world gave all and beyond. So you ever hear people quoting verses? You know? Like, John 3 says, for God's love, the world, and it's nothing. But if someone comes in and says, for God so loved the world, you're going, God, this guy believes it. He, God was speaking to me. He says, put your heart into this. You know, refresh it. First love stuff. Get back in to the meat of what you're saying. And I thought, Jesus, this is good. I needed to hear that. Thank you. See, he's personal. He'll help you with this. Sometimes you'll be going along. No weapon for him against me. can prosper. And every tongue that rises against me in judgment is condemned already. <laughs> And it's like, why is the devil still attacking me? Well, if you take a sword and you go, get away, get away, what's going to happen? Nothing. They're going to come and jump on your head. But if you pull out the sword and you go, shoo, 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 they're not even going to come close because you know what you're doing with it. God's word from your heart. He's personal. He wants to make this thing alive on the inside of you, when you get it in you and you start to speak it, you're talking to your brain, you're saying, brain, look, you're commanding your brain to come into line. You're saying, no, you will not think that anymore. I cast down that thought in Jesus' name. And I take up a new thought. I am strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I'm strong and very courageous. I prosper in everything that I do. Instead of standing around, oh no, poor me, poor me. Devil's giving you a hard time. You got to start talking to your brain. Get your life filled with the Word of God. You talk to your brain with the Word, and that's what's going to make the difference. You can talk to fig trees, and they'll wither. You can talk to mountains; they'll be removed. You can talk to storms, and they'll have to calm down. You can talk to circumstances and situations. You can command the devil to leave in the name of Jesus, and you can call the blessings of God to yourself. But see. None of that's going to be very effective at all if you don't get control of this thing first. This thing right up here. God wants you to take every thought captive. How do you do it? By speaking his word. You've got to talk to your brain. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, I thank you that there's power here from your word to change thoughts, to change directions of hearts, Father, these young men and women need to cleanse their way. And I know that they can do it according to your word, by taking heed, by surrounding their life with the word of God. I want you all to pray this prayer with me. Say, in the name of Jesus, no weapon formed against me can prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me in judgment, it's condemned right now in Jesus' name. I am strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Devil, in the name of Jesus, you have no power over me because all power in heaven and earth has been given unto Jesus. Therefore I go into all the world and speak the word. It's changing my school. It's changing my circumstances. It's changing my family. It's changing my mind. It's changing my heart. And in the name of Jesus, brain, I command you to think thoughts of God's Word. You will not wander anymore. You're going to lock in to the things of God in Jesus' name. Keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed. We've got a lot of new people here tonight. I know you workforce guys and gals that come all the time. You love Jesus. You're saved. You're full of God. And that's so awesome to me.
to see you. This is a generation that's getting a hold of God. Got a lot of new people here tonight, though, too. If you're here tonight, you've never said, Jesus, be the Lord of my life. Jesus wants to come into your heart. He wants to make the, help you make the changes that you need in order to have peace in your life. If you don't know Jesus, you've never committed your life to Him, you can do it tonight. He'll change your life. If you need this prayer, you need Jesus in your life, I want you to put your hand up wherever you are. Just put it up and put it back down wherever you are. We're going to pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let me ask you this too. How many of you, you're a believer, you love Jesus, but there's sin in your life. There's things between you and God and you know it. You want to get right with God tonight. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not even going to call you up here. We're going to say a group prayer. This is between you and God. But you know there's stuff in your life that's not right. There's sin. And you need to get it out and walk out of these doors tonight clean, free, cleansed by His Word and by receiving His forgiveness. If that's you, you're a believer, but you need some forgiveness tonight. Just put your hand up. Put it back down wherever you are. Okay? All right? Who else? Okay? Okay? Who else? Praise you, Jesus. Anybody else? Okay. Amen. Jesus loves you so much. He really does. I want you all to say this prayer with me. Say, God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to wash me clean from every sin. Take this garbage out of my life. I don't want it. I receive right now the love of God, the forgiving power of the blood of Jesus. I am clean, and I will not walk in that sin. Devil, take your sin and get out of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. There's some of you here that have requested prayer. Now, Stephanie, you've requested prayer. Why don't you come on up here? There's several others that have requested prayer. You wanted us to pray specifically for you. You're going through some situations, through some problems. Maybe if you're one of these ones that we've been talking to specifically tonight, you've had a hard time keeping your thoughts in line. And you just want prayer. You want us to pray with you and lay hands on you to get your thoughts together. That's not what this is about. There's some other situations here that Stephanie's been going through. But this word tonight, see, God wants to help you bring your thoughts into the captivity of the obedience of Christ so that you're not just scatterbrained. He wants to do that. There were some others that requested prayer tonight, specifically. I don't know who it was. Where's Cindy at? I think she might be up at the learning center. If you need prayer to overcome some situations, tonight, this doesn't mean like, oh, I'm dying. But this means you're going through some situation. I don't want you out there all by yourself doing it. I want to stand with you. You know, I want some of our leaders to come up. Rick, come on up here. Robin, why don't you come on up here? Uh, Ronnie, Lisa, Jeannie, why don't you come up here? Come on, all of our leaders, come on up here. If you need prayer, why don't you get up here? If you're going through it, you've got these situations that are facing your life, and you need some prayer. Leaders, just stand along here in a line. We'll just, everybody will get somebody. Steph, come here, I'll pray with you. But just, y'all who are coming up, just pick somebody and go to somebody. We're going to pray with you. We're going to pray with you. Anybody else? Anybody else? If you need prayer, come on, get up here. Now, I want to tell you something. Some of you guys are out there. You guys are going, no, I'm cool, I can handle it. No, you can't. Not without Jesus, you can't. Not in the flesh. You need some prayer. You need someone to stand with you. You need to believe God then get up here. We'll stand with you. Why don't everyone stand right now because we're going to stand together in Jesus' name. I want you to stretch your hands up here toward these that have come and we're going to pray. Just begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that the power of God is here, Lord, right now. In the name of Jesus, the ability of God the ability of God, the ability of God, in the name of Jesus, I bind every attack of the devil, I bind every lie of the devil, I bind every thought that's not of God. Come down in Jesus' name. Come down in Jesus' name. Father, I agree with Stephanie. 
that she receives the desire of her heart, the answer to her prayer. I agree with her right now in the name of Jesus that these attacks are broken off of her and she's receiving the, the clearness, the clarity of the voice of the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. No words, no words, no words coming from alternate sources. You hear the voice of the Good Shepherd and the voice of a stranger you will not follow. Confusion, you have to go now in the name of Jesus. We release it to happen. We release it to happen. That, that obstacle that's been in the way, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Be removed in Jesus' name. Be cast into the sea. I believe, Father, with Stephanie that she receives the answers to her prayers all of them confirm it on every side thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord Spencer and Cindy Nordyke reaching nations and generations for more information visit nordykeministries.com